Hey guys, happy Wednesday. How are you today? I pray that you're well. I hope that where you are is certainly much warmer than where I am today. Um, it is a much colder day today and um, I would trade that for some sunshine. Nevertheless, I want to wish you a happy Wednesday. Wherever you're joining from, wherever you are right now just listening in, thank you for being here. Thank you for stopping in, taking the time, being here in this moment. And if this is your first time, welcome. I'm Karen Althea, and this is Karen Althea Ministries. This is what we do right here every Wednesday at 4.30 Eastern Time. And all we do here is really just to encourage, empower, and inspire you in the word. We lift you up with some encouragement to take you through the rest of the week or maybe in the upcoming week. And so we want you to know that you're not alone. You are, you may have a particular unique situation, but you're not unique in such a way that you're the only one going through um, some of the struggles. We are in this together and often we just want to stop in so that you can know that and that's what we do right here. So welcome. If this is your first time, very, very, very special welcome to you. It is so good to have you. And guess what? It's no fun being here by myself. I say it all the time. So all of you who are on, welcome, guys. Let's see who is on today. I see you, Minister Donna. Yes, you're in the house. Good to have you. Thank you for being here. There are others of you on. You're not coming up yet, but hey, I know you're there. And I'm grateful for you today. And you know what, it's, it's been one of those days, just, just the, the travel and the traffic and, and, and the snow and, you know, everything. But, you know, I'm grateful that at least I, I made it. I wanted to be here back in my office to share um, with you from the space. I don't like to be driving when I'm sharing with you. So I was grateful I got here um, in time for that. So welcome. Um, how has the day been for you? I pray that you are keeping well. So many things happening in the news, so many um, circumstances going on around us. It is so hard. It is so tough. I, I want to just acknowledge that today. I see you, Sister Juliet. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, everyone who's on. Thank you. Um, you know, today, as I, as I just check in with my own self in, you know, thinking of coming on and sharing and, you know, been checking in in myself for a while last week, this week, and just how heavy some things around us are, just the news, just what we hear of in families, what we know of in friends. It, it's a tough go. It is such a tough time. And so I'm really just in my spirit, just, you know, carrying that for me as well as for so many of you. Um, hi, Sister Sheikha, I see you. God bless you. That, that we're in this together. Be Just know you're not alone. And I want to encourage you in that. Just before I get into the word, as usual, I'd like to always just remind you of two things that we meet in Haven of Healing Ministries. As usual, you know, I'm trying to, to drop that in the chat for, for the link, those who might be on. And you want to join our Bible studies on Thursday night. We have a very open, a very chill um, Bible study moment, you know, you don't have to be versed in the word. And if you are welcome, and if you are not, and you're in that middle stage, it doesn't matter. We all just read the word. We talk about it. We expand on it through the, through what the Lord inspires us. We give history to it. If that becomes necessary, it's an easy place to relax and learn the word of God. We just read the scriptures through. And I know that that can be so daunting for many persons, even for the believer, to read the scripture because we we don't think it's exciting we can watch any movie and it's intriguing but many times by the time we pick up the bible to read it is such a hard thing you feel bored you feel tired you feel like the stories are not always connecting especially depending on the version of scripture that you choose so you know we read together and we go through it verses you know small portions of verses at a time so that together we can learn the word and understand the story and that it becomes more meaningful for our walk in the lord so i want to remind you and to invite you to that we meet on thursday nights that link in the chat has a button for you to enter the room for the bible study so know that you can click on that link save it in your your browser if not if maybe you're just listening and you're not seeing the link it's www.havenofhealingministries.com. And remember, it's haven, not heaven, haven, H-A-V-E-N. And that means a safe space, that place of shelter and, and safety. So havenofhealingministries.com. So we want to invite you to our Bible studies 
and um, we're looking forward to having you. And then on Saturday night, we meet for our weekend services and we enter the healing room in that time at 7 p.m. on Saturday nights. That button is also on the website. If you click the button, it will say enter the healing room or it will tell you to enter the Bible study. So Thursday night Bible study and, and Saturday night, the healing room. You don't want to miss the healing room. My God, the, the testimonies in the healing room, the healing that's taking place in the healing room, the lives that are transformed in the healing room, the miracles that are wrought in the healing room, the just what God is doing in that space and in people's lives lives it's it's nothing short of a miracle and you know maybe you've been there and you probably feel i haven't received mine yet hey it's it's on its way you're next in line for your blessing don't don't quit yet don't quit yet you just don't know when your time is right around the corner and sometimes that's what happens we we give up so too early too soon in the game and yes, we wonder why others get theirs before us. And it can be hard. It, it's like when you're sitting in, a, in traffic, like I just had coming home. And, and you see some people just navigating all these lanes and getting ahead. And you think, I probably should have done that to, to get up there so I can be five cars ahead or five, you know, 10 vehicles ahead. And, and sometimes you feel that way because you are, you're so far behind where you're at or how you feel your struggle is. But I want to encourage you to keep holding on. And the healing room is a place for you on Saturday nights at 7 p.m. It is absolutely an amazing, um, unforgettable Saturday night. So we want to invite you to that to join us as well. So hi, Sister Levy. Welcome. I'm glad you caught us today. And I hope that you're able to hear us. I know that you've been having some of that difficulty with your phone as well. So welcome, guys, everyone, today. And I'm going to ask you to just drop it in the chat for those who are coming in after. Some people miss the text and so on. So you are here. Those of you dropping in the chat right now, thank you for that. We're going to be looking at 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. And I want to, to bring that up and read that. Um, 1 Timothy chapter, chapter um, 6 and verse 12. Okay, even my, even my phone seemed to be um, kind of freezing up here on me. But anyway, it, it's coming up. One verse, one verse that just ministered to my spirit. And as always, you know that I, I share what ministers to me um, because I know I'm so human. I'm so human just as all of you are, just as we all are. And the things that I experience, the struggles, the pain, when something ministers to me, I want to encourage your spirit with that. So hear what Paul wrote to Timothy in verse 12. Fight the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you. And this is the NLT, which you have declared so well before many witnesses. So fight the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you, which you have declared so well before many witnesses. That verse, that verse just ministered to me today and I want to just share with you, you know, what comes into my spirit and to encourage you. So welcome if you're just joining. I see you, Tash. Thanks for being here. And um, I see you, Sister Peter Gay. So good to have you guys and others of you who might be on. Thank you, Donna. I see that. Man, she's such an amazing scribe. First Timothy 6, verse 12. That's the word today. And, you know, as I, as I reflected on this word, I thought about just how, how so many days can be a battle, a battle for me, a struggle for me. And when I think about the struggle that some days are for me, it really makes me think about what your struggle and what your days might be in terms of your own struggle. And, and when I say that, I by no means want to compare myself to say, oh, I'm using my struggle to compare because I do not in any way believe that I am above or or um, in any position to not experience anything like you are. But my own struggles make me think of you, make me think of what others might be going through when I think of some of the thoughts that cross my mind, some of the things that come into my way or in my spirit in the moment, some of the, the anxious moments that I experience. And I say that because only the grace of God 
that keeps me on some of these tough days. And you wonder what someone who shares the word, someone who um, who works with people through a psychotherapeutic lens of helping people to cope. And yet I have my moments very frequently of tough days, days that are hard to, to get up from, days that are challenging, days when you feel like you're at a burnout, days when you feel like your emotions are so low, when your body is so tired, not just because of physical work, but maybe emotional emotional and mental work. And it makes me wonder. It makes me wonder how you cope. It makes me wonder who do you reach out to? It makes me wonder how are you really, how are you really, really doing? I, I wonder how much you might really be struggling. I wonder how easy it is for you to feel, um, you know, like this faith thing is not working out. I wonder how easy it is for you to feel like sometimes the stories you hear from people who've given up faith, who are probably not even believers, how easy it is to believe them in those moments because your struggles are real. Every day is a battle. Every day. Every day for the believer. Whether we realize it or not, every day is a battle. If it's not your personal life, it's someone that you're helping to hold and to carry. If it is not somebody who's close to you, it's what you hear in the news. Every day is a battle. And some of those moments hit you in places where you, you begin to think. You begin to think and to wonder and you become concerned sometimes. Like, I wonder if I'm believing something that doesn't really exist. I wonder if I'm putting too much of my investment in this faith thing and it, and it is not really so. I wonder if what that person said is really true that, you know, life is just about doing this for yourself and, and there's no big God in this. And, and sometimes you would amaze yourselves with the thoughts that cross your mind in those moments when you are hit down by those struggles because we're human, because the enemy uses those moments to fill our thoughts and, and to, to with, with things that would cause us to double guess and to, to wonder about God's faithfulness, to even challenge that in what he says in his word. And it's because you're human. It's because I'm human. It's because of who we are. We are frail and we are, we are so vulnerable and susceptible. Um, success Acceptable. Oh my God, that was a tongue twister right there for me. Um, to what? To what's happening around us, and it, it becomes difficult. It becomes difficult to to cope. Your life becomes such a battle that you're so overwhelmed. We get there. Some days I get so overwhelmed. Some days I question God and I said, where are you? Where are you in all the promises that you've made to me? And I have believed. It's not going to be because I haven't believed. And then you wait and it feels like nothing happens. And then the enemy brings these thoughts in or someone, you know, like Job's wife, after the frustration, says something and it makes you wonder if you are leaning to the wrong side of the belief or if they are the wrong ones but sometimes it's hard to differentiate isn't it it's hard to know if where you are right now is really the truth of where you should be in god's word some days some days it's not as black and white some days we're not on the mountain some days our valleys are so deep that whoa only the grace of god keep us coming out of it to see the next minute. So I get it. I get it because some moments I get some of those days. Some moments I'm so challenged in my spirit that I have to push myself to fight, to fight for my faith. And hence this word ministers to me because there are three things that I see coming out of here as Paul sought to address Timothy a young pastor, a young pastor who was going to a, a congregation of people who were more senior. They were, they were older. They had their own, you know, they were set in their own ways. They had their own ideologies about life and the faith. And he was challenged by them. He was challenged to stand up to his own faith, even in those circumstances. He was challenged to wonder if, if what he believed was right and could make, could make it 
through the times that he was going through. And Paul wrote to encourage his spirit. And Paul addressed from what I see in this one verse, the fight, the fight, the fight that the believer is in. And I see coming out of it the faith. So there's a fight, there's a faith. And then he talked to him about the fervor, the fervor with which he came to the faith in. And I thought to myself that, wow, isn't that what the believer is challenged by every single day? The fight, the faith, the fervor, we've lost it. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's the constant fight. It's the constant wrestle. It, it, the word literally means wrestling. It's like being in a public game public fight and it's a constant wrestle and, and and the fight gets harder and you feel like you you want to throw the towel in and the fight gets to a place where you feel like I, I, I don't i'm out of options i don't know what else to believe god i don't know what else to think i don't know who else to talk to i don't know what other prayer to pray it's a fight it's a fight Every day your life is a fight. And if it's not your faith that's affected in that moment in terms of your belief, it's sometimes your physical body. It's the fight of remaining healthy. It's a fight of feeling motivated and, and that you, you're challenged to go on in your spirit. It's a fight. And so Timothy faced so many of these uncertainties with the, you know, with the, the reality of the, of the people that, that he was going to lead. How would he, how could he trust his faith to take him into these uncertain times and places? It's the fight. It's the fight. Wrestling, contending for victory. Every day you're fighting for victory. And the fact that you are here, that's a victory. The fact that you are listening to this in this moment, that's a victory. The fact that you are alive and awake and you are despite how you felt yesterday and you didn't think you could go on here you are in this minute in this moment that is a victory and I bless God for that for you because you're in a fight don't ever forget that you're in a fight and the fight is really to take your faith and so that's the next thing that Paul addressed with Timothy he said that the fight is a public game I told you that in as much as it's private it's private to you. It's how you're living it. But you're in this thing publicly. Your whole life is a testimony. It's a testimony to the world. It's a testimony to those in your household. It's a testimony to the students you teach. It's a testimony to your children that you raise. It's a testimony to your spouse. It's a testimony to your bosses and supervisees. It's a testimony to relatives and friends. It's a testimony to the world around you. It's a testimony to the people who are on your Facebook page. It's a testimony to those who are looking and listening out for a word of encouragement, for that devotional that you drop each day, for that challenge that you give to them. Maybe just that post, which is one of laughter and fun that people can re just relax in a time of COVID and this kind of pandemic. Even that is a testimony and a ministry in itself. So it is that public game yet it is so private but we're living it publicly and paul is encouraging us to fight fight the good fight of faith it's a good fight it is worth it you have to fight forcefully and violently you can't just sit and just take the punches. You can't. If you just take all the punches, they're going to knock you out. And after that, it's like the wrestler in the ring. One, two, three. You can't get up. You can't get up. You have to fight violently. You have to fight with fervor. You have to fight forcefully for your faith. Sometimes when you feel the darkness coming in on you and crowding in your mind, you have to get yourself up out of that bed. You have to shake yourself up out of that darkness and slumber and, and walk around and fight. Say, I'm going to fight for this. I'm going to believe this. I'm not going down like this. I'm going to keep trusting because God's word is true. You have to keep fighting. It's a good fight. I know it's a hard and a long fight, but it's a good fight. It is a good fight. And it's the only way that you're going to remain sane with everything that's going on around you. Keep fighting. 
I know you said you've been fighting for 10 years. My goodness, for the last two years of the pandemic, you've really been fighting. Because heaven is really sounding sweeter to some persons, even now. You beg God, like Elijah, to just take you. You wonder why you are here, why you're still here struggling like that. It's a fight, and yet you are here. You are here. There's a greater purpose for your life. So I know the fight is real. Whether it be from paying the mortgage to, to just about any bills, whether it be from maintaining relationships that it's, it doesn't matter. It's like everyone you try, it's, it, it's, it, just, it just goes awry. And you feel like you don't even have a social life. You feel like you don't even have a confidant. You feel like there's no one you can run to. And it's a fight. It could be a fight because it's an unemployment fight. And, and you can't, you've tried everything and you still can't nail that job. It's a fight because you've tried so hard to be um, everything your family wants you to be and yet you're never good enough. And it's a fight. Every day is a fight. Every day is a battle. And oh my God, you are still here. You are still here. Sometimes when I come out of some of those fights of my own life, woo! I'm like, God, that was one, that was a close one, where your spirit's broken, where you feel like this is it, God, I'd rather be home with you than to continue in this fight. It's a hard fight. You're just overwhelmed and confused and frustrated. Where maybe it's a fight with your children and, 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 and you feel like everything you've ever done is just gone astray and you feel like you've lost. It's a fight. Every day is a fight. If you don't have it in the workplace, you have it before you get up out of your bed. You have it before you have the first conversation with the person that's in your house with you. You have it before you have the first uh, uh, text on your phone. It's a fight. Every day. And if you don't have it any of those times, the minute you turn on the phone, it's a fight. Or wait till you go on social media. It's a fight. Just what you see or somebody throwing a stone at you out there. It, it is a fight that we are in. And I, I know and I will not in any way minimize it. But hear me. I want to speak to your spirit today. You are still here because there's a purpose for you. And God has a plan for you. And Paul encourages Timothy and I'm encouraging your spirit right now in this moment. Fight the good fight. Be forceful with it. Be, be, be violent in your response and fight back. Don't succumb to the darkness. Don't let the enemy draw you into the deep hole of depression and sadness and blackness and guilt and suicidal thoughts. Don't let him bring you into that darkness because when he sucks you in there, I'm telling you, it feels so good in there that you want to stay in there. And, and there are those who never come back from out of there. Fight the good fight. Fight him off. Speak to yourself. Get up. Walk around. Rise up and walk in the word of God. Even if you're only saying, I'm not going in there with you, Satan. I'm not going in there with you, Satan. I'm not going in there. Whatever you need to do to keep yourself going. The fight is real. The fight is real. And so, Paul reminded Timothy, after encouraging him about the fight, he said, don't give in. You are called to this fight. Wow. I wonder if you know that what you are bearing, many persons, many of those even on right now listening to me, many of us couldn't bear what you are bearing. Your fight is selected for you because you, only you can bear it. And he will never put more on you than you can bear. So you were called to this fight. I can't carry your fight. Neither can you carry mine. You were called to this fight. Hold on in the fight. God's trusting you to go through this fight because he picked you for the fight. Remember the fervor? You remember the fervor that you entered the game in? When you entered this game, you remember how excited you were when you came to the Lord. You remember how you, you professed before many, before many thy vows, O Lord, are upon me until death. I am determined to hold on to the end. You remember the fervor? You remember that fervor 25 years ago, 30 years ago, 16 years ago? You remember your fervor five years ago? 
how excited you were about your faith in God. Paul says to Timothy, remember. Remember the witnesses. So keep running hard and fast, he says. In this race, you still have it in you. It is set before you. Keep looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. He said there's a prize to seize, eternal life. Eternal life is there for you. So keep looking. Don't be distracted by the pandemic around you and the naysayers and the negativity and the bad news and, and everything. I know it's real. I'm not telling you it's an illusion. It's real. But don't be distracted by it. Keep fighting. Keep the faith. And keep your fervor. Because God is with you. And he called you to this fight. And he will never leave you. Or forsake you. God bless you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. For he will come. Your weeping will endure for a night. I know it feels longer than a night. Yes. But your joy is coming in the morning. You see the same measure that you suffer? is the same measure he's going to give back to you. He says full measure. Press down, shaken together. Running over. He will bless you and he will give it back. Just keep holding on and keep pushing through. Keep going on with the fight and keep your faith and remember the fervor and let that drive you as you continue in this walk with the Lord. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for making this your place. Join me in Bible study in the Haven of Healing Ministries tomorrow night at 7 um, at 6.30 p.m. and on Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, that is. And if not, I look forward to meeting you right here next week, Wednesday, same time, same place right here on Facebook Live, where again, we empower, encourage, and inspire each other in the word of the Lord. Thank you so much for being here with me. God bless you, and keep holding on. Keep holding on. Amen. Love and blessings. Peace.